So, hello, everyone, and welcome to my studio, my my desk in my bedroom here in cold Sweden, uh, and to the woodcutting scene or uh, chopping down the the tree scene. And this is actually my my first time making one of these uh, behind the scenes or how it's made videos. But I really wanted to this time because my animation got kind of viral on Reddit and on Instagram and various sites. Uh, and I've gotten such a wonderful response and I've read every comment and it's been so nice and a few crazy weeks. but. I'm here now and I will try to explain uh, the various sequences and answer most of your questions. I, I don't think I can go through every single one or every, every question, but I will try. But anyways, uh, here's my imaginary tree and here is my, ooh, my axe. I can show you here how it was made like that. Uh, the handle is uh, made out of wood and the head is uh, sculpted out of Super Sculpey and then painted with uh, acrylic paint. Uh, and you can actually carve in the Super Sculpey. So I, I took a ox cutter knife, I think it's called, and uh, uh, carved it out to make it look sharper. Uh, and I got my my imaginary tree because my original tree got thrown away it was too torn up of the animation uh, so my tree and my axe and one of the most common question uh, i'm getting right now is uh, how i made the the axe to look heavy and it's actually quite quite simple uh, and I will try to explain it because I, I want the, the head to look heavier than the handle, as in real life. So every movement uh, got to start with the handle, and the head has to follow. So if I move my hand away from the tree, the handle will uh, start the movement, and the head will follow. So when I'm animating with my hand, I start off with moving the handle and when I stop with the handle the head will follow and then when I move my hand closer to the tree and then stop the head will follow so one more time uh, moving my hand away from the tree head follows Moving it closer to the tree, head follows. So that's the first part of cutting down the tree. And the second part is about making a gash in the tree trunk, like a like a bigger and bigger gash for every hit with the axe. And I will try to demonstrate it, okay? So be prepared for the best demonstration ever. Okay. <sighs> So that's, that's part two of chopping down the tree and the third and last part is making these small wood chips. I can zoom in and show you. So the third and last part is making the uh, wood chips fall out of the gash, uh, like uh, flying through midair uh, after every hit with the axe. And to do that, I need something like this, kind of. Uh, I use clay and aluminum wire and some clay at the end to attach the object to the wire. And for this sequence, I like for the first frames, I wanted to come as close as possible with the wood chip to the gash. And the first frame kind of looked like this with the wood chip inside the gash 
And when you got the wood chip attached to the uh, wire like this, it's easy to frame by frame move it further and further away from the gash. Uh, and when you got the clay, you can also spin the wood chip however you want. And I actually made some of the wood chips uh, spin around in the air, uh, mid air, to make it look even uh, more real. So this was my starting position, and then frame, 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 or frame. And then I added a little bounce to some of the wood chips, frame, 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 frame. And then, boop. Mm. So when you're done animating the wire and the wood chip, you need to erase the wire somehow, and I use Photoshop with a uh, double layer technique so you have one layer with the wire and the wood chip like this like this and then underneath this layer you have a blank one without the wood chip and uh, without the wire and then it's easy to just use the eraser tool and take out the unnecessary shadows and the wire and the clay just keep in mind to not erase the the shadow of the wood chip because it will it will lose the realness if you erase everything except the wood chips just keep the shadow Okay, so that's all for this sequence, and I can try to show you uh, three parts combined. So, okay, here we go. And this is the second sequence where I uh, I chop the firewood, so we can start with placing the the wood on the chopping block like this, and go through the hand movement first. You can see if I like this there. So the first part of the the second sequence is uh, me swinging the axe, uh, and I still want it to look heavy, like the the head of the axe should still be heavier than the handle. So it's the, the exact same principle as uh, last sequence. And to swing the axe easier, I use this finger to control it easier and then my index finger and my thumb as a, kinda like a pivot. Uh, so I can start off here and we will make the handle go first and then use this finger to make the head follow. And then I added uh, an extra swing to make the axe look even heavier. So extra swing and then up again 
and then the last swing and then right over here you can just kind of make the the axe just drop by itself and when the axe uh, is making contact with the wood uh, that's the last frame of this uh, first part and then you can just remove the axe and uh, start with uh, part two so for the second part of this uh, sequence you need to take this uh, small piece of wood and split it into two halves uh, kind of like <laughs> so and when you have these uh, two halves you can take some more of this clay uh, put it like this to make them stick to the shopping block like that and some more like that uh, so the first frame of this uh, part kind of looks like this uh, when they are split but still close to each other and when you have the clay you can just frame by frame move them closer to uh, to the edge of the shopping block like this And then you want a small piece to fall off the edge, like this. Uh, and you can use some some more clay. Ooh. There. So you can place a small piece on top like this. And I almost always use clay instead of uh, uh, instead of wire or uh, uh, or rigs. Uh, at least for small pieces like this, because when you make small pieces fall, uh, it's easy to use clay because you can just frame by frame press it down a little bit. And I think it's easier actually. And then it's just the same principle as before uh, in Photoshop to make the clay disappear and make the small piece of wood fly. So, uh, one layer uh, with a small piece of wood and the clay, and one layer without. And then you can just erase the clay and the shadow of the clay to make it look like it's flying. To make the axe look heavy, uh, I had to make it uh, drop off the shopping block like really fast. Uh, and to make things look fast in uh, in stop motion, you have to make uh, big changes between frames. Uh, so the first frame of the last part will be over here somewhere uh, after I split the wood. So first frame, and then I moved it across the shopping block like this, frame by frame, just a, a couple of millimeters of change uh, between frames. And then right at the at the edge, over here it will be a big change uh, in movement so from here to here in one frame so kind of like hold up frame 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 and frame and then whoop frame and frame and if you look at my handle and uh, the head uh, the head will just drop down and the handle will stay in place to make the the head look heavy so frame, frame, and frame, and then look at the handle and look at the head. Whoop, frame, and frame. And that's about it. So we can try to put all these three parts together, like uh, in the first sequence. So we have the axe wing. Oh, like so. And we have the wood splitting. Whoop like so we can try one more time mm. and we have the axe dropping off the shopping block So that's everything actually for 
this video uh, and if you liked it you can tell me and I will try to make a part two where I show the water animation uh, and I can try to show you how I made the fire as well uh, so I hope you liked it and uh, I see you soon okay bye